Okay, hello and welcome to this session um, to give you a little bit more information about the MSc in Clinical Oncology at the University of Birmingham. Um, you're very welcome. I'm Dr. Regine Essender. I'm the programme lead for the programme. I have a deputy who is Tracy Perry. Um, and there is also a clinical lead for the programme, Dr. Ipsen Ma, who is a um, consultant at the University Hospital of Birmingham. So I'm going to aim in this session to give you a little bit of background about the programme, um, but if there are any questions, please do put them into to the, the chat. I'm very happy to answer any um, specific questions. So the MSc in Clinical Oncology has been running for over 20 years now. Um, it's a nationally recognised training programme um, within the Royal College of Radiologists and meeting their part one um, syllabus. Um, but it's not just for um, people who are interested in clinical oncology. It is a multidisciplinary programme, um, very much aimed at people working within the healthcare profession or within um, laboratories that are involved in pathology and diagnosis. The programme runs in two different formats, a part-time programme and a full-time programme. And the full-time programme is specifically aimed at international students, but it doesn't have to be just international students. Um, but because we are particularly um, thinking about international students and what meets their needs, we've included within the programme a six month clinical observership within um, the Queen Elizabeth Hospital here in Birmingham, um, because we know from talking to students that they find that clinical exposure extremely useful. That is not um, a practical hands-on qualifying kind of um, experience. It is a opportunity to meet with clinicians, to discuss cases, to meet patients, and to observe clinical practice, to get familiar with the way um, NHS systems work, but more importantly, the culture of caring and clinical trials that exist within the UK health environment and perhaps isn't as important or isn't as advanced in some developing countries. So as I say, the programme is aimed um, at two different groups of students, part-time students and full-time students. To be on the part-time programme, you would have to be a UK or uh, EU student. We usually recruit about 10 students per year to that programme, and that is a two and a half year part-time programme. The, mod the modules are taught in week-long blocks, and we'll come on to that in a minute, but you will be in attendance for a solid week about six times a year if you're on the part-time programme. And those students are very multidisciplinary. So we recruit doctors, nurses, pharmacists, physiotherapists, like I say, people working in, in the path labs within the hospital. Um, and we really value that multidisciplinarity within our students. We learn a lot from talking to each other and from the group discussions, and we very much try and facilitate that within the way we teach the programme. So say the programme does meet the FRCR part one um, requirements and um, because of that, we recruit a lot of our students also from the, the local deanery um, as they use the programme as part of the preparation for those Royal College exams. The full-time programme is for UK-based students, but also international students. And again, we recruit about 10 students per year to that full-time programme. That full-time programme is a one-year, very intensive programme. Um, as I say, that includes a six month clinical observership within the hospital, which is, is a, a very unique um, offering that other universities within the country that might offer a oncology MSc do not offer that observership. So we have a number of modules that make up the program. Um, these are our core modules. So we start from the very beginning. Um, with what is for a lot of our students actually quite a challenging module because it's very science-based, um, but it is 
the basis of cancer. Understand what cancer is as a disease, molecular and cellular basis of cancer, what mutations, what viruses, and how they cause cancer. Um, and so we can really understand how cancer spreads, metastasizes, um, and therefore give you a solid foundation in which to build all the other modules. Our next module is molecular um, pathology and how that is used in stratified cancer medicine. So taking one step on from the science, looking at specific um, pathologies that can be used as biomarkers to use for current approaches for cancer treatment and stratifying our patients for the most effective no novel therapies. The next module is to start preparing you for your dissertation. So that is a module in research methods and statistics. And then we get on to therapy. And so we have a module on cancer therapy that looks at all angles from traditional systemic chemotherapies through um, monoclonal antibodies, novel therapies, TKIs, um, and some immunotherapy. And then the final module of the core modules, which will be done in the second year if you're a part-time student, is a module with this very long name, the perioperative management of oncology patients undergoing surgery. What that is, is a module that is talking about the fact that the mainstay of cancer therapy is still surgery. But rather than getting into too much depth on the particular nuts and bolts of how you do surgery, because none of our students, or very rarely are any of our students actual surgeons, it is much more about how a nurse or a pharmacist would support a patient who is going through surgery. Give you an understanding of what that surgery might involve, but also um, one of the key messages is actually how um, physically hard work it is for a patient to undergo surgery and therefore how a patient needs to be in the best possible health prior to that surgery and supported it supported post-surgery to help them to recover. So those are our core modules um, and in addition to that students have the opportunity to do um, usually two optional modules. But our optional modules um, cover a whole range of different areas of oncology. Um, so palliative care and um, how to ensure that our patients have a good death if it gets to that point of their cancer journey. Pediatric oncology, looking specifically at childhood cancers. Um, hematology. And then two modules that are part of the Royal College requirements, so radiation biology and radiation physics. In addition to those modules that are offered specifically by the oncology programme, our students are allowed to do modules that are offered by other programmes within the College of Medical and Dental um, Sciences. And three of those modules in particular we think are quite suitable for our students and you are able to select to do those modules if you wish to. So those are cancer immunology and immunotherapy, early phase clinical trials, and I never get quite sure if I've got the name of this one right, but something around systems reviews and evidence-based medicine um, and how we um, use those methodologies well to be able to, to do very high level research to evaluate the literature. So all the modules that we offer on the cancer, um, so on clinical oncology program itself are taught as intensive blocks of module. So we put some um, pre-learning materials up on our Canvas pages, our virtual learning environment, and we ask our students to, to look at those uh, about a week before the module to start familiarising yourself with the timetable, what's happening during the module, some, some background reading. And then during the, the module, um, which most of which this year we have been able to deliver face to face, we have done um, a module um, over Zoom um, because of COVID, but it, we're aiming to deliver as much as possible face to face um, or blended 
um, and have really interactive sessions. So within our teaching, you might well have an e-lecture to engage with, but then we will have tutorials and live discussions um, because, as I said earlier, one of the real strengths of the programme is it's multidisciplinary and it's really important our students are talking to each other and learning from each other and sharing those ideas um, with our, our module leads. Um, so they are quite intensive weeks. Um, you are being taught by consultants working in the local hospitals and by um, professors and senior members of, of staff on their specialist subject. So whereas with some programmes, you might have a junior faculty member who delivers most of the module. For this programme, you will have 20 or 30 different speakers, all of which are the leading experts in the field that they're talking about. That is a real positive in terms of the quality of the teaching you're getting. The only thing I would say for our international students is just to be aware that if you've got that many different speakers, you will have quite a few different accents and teaching styles, and therefore your English needs to be to a very good standard to be able to keep up with the programme. And that is why our entrance requirements for English language are quite high. Um, because otherwise you will find it quite hard to follow some of those sessions. As much as possible, we record sessions so that you can go back and listen to lectures again. A lot of them, like I say, we have e-lectures there again. So you can play back lectures at your own pace to help you to it with your studies. And obviously, following each of these modules, you'll have an assessment to do. And that assessment takes a huge variety of different forms. So some of them will be an essay. Um, because that is a really good way of showing your understanding and for you to begin to build your confidence in your academic writing skills, which you'll need if you enter into a dissertation. Some of the modules will be assessed by oral presentations because being able to communicate um, the science that you're learning is, is actually really important. Some of them will be exam based or um, more sort of structured answer type um, topics. Each of the modules usually have two or maybe three different assessments that make up um, the full assessment suite for that module. Um, again, allowing you to test different strengths um, that different students might have and be able to demonstrate both your knowledge, but also your understanding, which is very key at master's level. And then finally, if you are doing the MSc, you will do a dissertation. If you're doing the postgraduate diploma, you can um, leave the programme after that talk phase and you'll have learned all the important information um, and that suits some of our students. But if you want to get the, the MSc, then you need to do a dissertation. And that is a, about 10,000 words written dissertation based on a piece of research that you would have conducted in a fairly independent way. Our part-time students usually do a dissertation that is around their workplace so it's a real benefit to their employees who have sent them on the program um, our full-time students will do a project that will be linked to their clinical observership usually so they will be working with somebody for their observership and they've decided that um, they want to particularly focus on one particular aspect of oncology when they came on the program so they might want to particularly be focusing on, on gynae oncology or on urology um, and we'll have placed them with a clinical mentor with that interest um, and you will work with them to develop a dissertation project around the research that they're already conducting in that field. And the type of dissertations that students undertake are quite varied so a lot of them are um, retrospective clinical audits, qualitative um, or quantitative pieces of research, looking back at patient records and seeing um, how patients have coped on a particular drug and to see how that compares with the published literature, um, because we know that drugs are approved based on clinical trials and our patients that are in clinical trials are not our average oncology patients and so kind of that real life 
um, understanding of the toxicities, the treatments, um, side effects that our patients experience. Um, maybe looking at um, treatment breaks or how well um, patients cope if, if these things develop side effects, etc. Um, there is the opportunity to do lab based projects, particularly our students who have come in with a um, science background and have been working in the pathology lab. Again, we work very closely with the path lab at the QE and we can place students in the laboratories there to be developing new assays to understand. Um, how those systems work. Some of our students do qualitative research, so that tends to be more of our part-time students, where they might want to do questionnaires and interviews with patients, service evaluation of um, a particular change in practice that we might be introducing. Um, a lot of those have been in the past around things like nurse-led clinics um, and, and seeing how our uh, patients feel about those or whether that you know, the um added convenience of being able to talk to a, a nurse and into the telephone um how, how how patients feel about that um so there often are, are qualitative research that um uh, students can undertake and each year some of our students will also do um, a systematic review based dissertation so a literature review but based on a full systematic and methodology to get the quality that's needed for a master's programme. All the students um, plan their project with support from, from the team um, and then go through a kind of a formal approval process for those projects. So we ask you to do a presentation about what you're going to do for your project so that we can ensure that the project that you're undertaking is going to be at appropriate master's level and that you're not going to start doing a project that isn't then going to allow you to pass into the MSc. Many of those projects are actually extremely high quality. Many of our students have gone on to present their findings at conferences, particularly things like BOPA for, for the pharmacists, but also um, at, at, at nursing and medical conferences. Um, some of them have been published as papers. Um, so these are good quality dissertations um, that the students do produce on. Um, so hopefully that's given you a flavour of the, the programme, um, the type of exposure um, that you're going to get within your programme. Um, we're very happy to answer any questions that you might have.